All right, well, I've had a pretty lazy morning for day number three, letting everything get uh, pretty much completely dry, for which I'm very grateful. But now it's time to go. Hey, and welcome to part two of this North Cascade section hike, which covers days three, four, and five of the eight-day excursion. At this point, I'd survived the trial by rain of day two and was convinced that the trip could only go up from here. And at least until a particularly thunderous evening, that supposition seemed to be correct. In many ways, this is the meat of the trip, with clearer daytime weather, ridgeline hiking, and Okanagan landscapes. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and one more thing. A note to someone I met on the trail. Paul, if you're out there, please buy yourself a map. Look at the striations on this ridge. That's a really cool pattern. Tiny little set of lakes down there. The haze isn't helping, but we've got our first view of Hearts Pass here. It's not the near ridge, but the far ridge. And then you might not be able to see it, but you may see the zigzagging lines up the hill behind it that lead to the radar station slash lookout. Here's a look down into what I believe is called the May Creek Campground. Not a lot of shade down there since all these trees burned. But there's a campground right at Hearts Pass and then you come like a mile and a half up the road and you can camp here as well. It's a really neat opportunity to basically car camp in the Alpine or subalpine, which you don't you don't get to do very often. This beautiful feather from what I assume is a red-tailed hawk. Looks more orange in this light though. Well, I've made it to Hearts Pass. There's not much to say except that I'm here. Nice spot for lunch. Um, I pumped some water out of a puddle in the road, which is not super fun. It's pretty gross water, but I'm thirsty. And I'm not sure when the next water source is, so I gotta do that. Uh, this is a real milestone landmark spot. This is where people usually are finished with their full PZT3 hikes. After they get to Canada, they come back to here. Um, it's where they start their southbound ones. Uh, it's, an ex it's an exciting spot to get to. And I did discover that regrettably there are no garbage cans here, so I can't drop off all my empty bags and whatnot. Alas. See the lookout up there, as well as the trail traversing the hills, on and on. Welcome to Windy Pass at about 5.30 p.m. This uh, is going to be home for the night. I'm not actually in the grassy area, of course. I'm set up in those trees back there. My hammock kind of needs them. There are um, there are ways for me to use my setup just on the ground, with or without the tarp. Um, and I've been tempted to do that at times, just... Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more picturesque out here in the meadow area, um, rather than having to go hide in the trees. That being said, um, at the end of the day, the hammock is more comfortable. So... Uh, and I know how to set it up and anything else I'd be doing I, I would be trying for the first time Which I'm not all that excited to do on this trip is try things for the first time I'd rather stick with a tried and true There's been a million of these guys These ground squirrels Basically tiny cousins to marmots I haven't seen any marmots, but I've seen dozens and dozens of these guys Throughout all portions of the trail. They've got a little fluffy tail They make a high-pitched squeak and they seem to like it here. Well, it's the beginning of day number four. It's looking like a beautiful day. 
and I don't want to jinx it, but I think uh, it's continuing to get less smoky. I can't get a true definitive answer to that until I actually get on the trail, but the uh, horizons that I can see are looking a lot better. Not perfect still, but better. Here's a look back towards uh, down south. You can see how much more clear it is today. Up to the left is the uh, lookout on top of Slate Peak. Uh, and whew, more mountains down there. But we got visibility today, baby, at least south and east. I'm about to crest the ridge and see what it's like looking west. Oh yeah, this is looking west. This is so much better. Oh man. pretty big flat valley in front of us and you can see how at least some of the smoke that remains has sunk into it which gives it a really surreal uh, sort of picture. Oh, if I had time to just sit here and pick blueberries it would be pretty excellent. We've made it to the junction with my next trail. I'll now be leaving the Pacific Crest Trail and heading west on the Pacific Northwest Trail towards Ross Lake over Devil's Ridge. It's always interesting to me to get a sense of scale and comparison between places. I'm sitting just north of 5,000 feet in elevation right now, which uh, for the Washingtonians among you is about the same elevation as Hurricane Ridge. Now, these two places, of course, look quite a bit different. This is heavily forested with mature large trees, and that is uh, the true alpine. Um, and, you know, the trees go quite a ways up. I descended, I think, more than a thousand feet to get here, and we had healthy forest the whole way up. It's just a very interesting contrast between two different parts of the state. Look at this guy. I don't think anybody lives here anymore. This trail, after you cross this creek, is a huge pain to track down. I spent like half an hour looking for it and I finally got it. So look back at Holman Pass. At the intersection of the PCT and the PNT. Well, I've reached Sky Pilot Pass, I believe is what it's called, uh, which is where I'm going to be spending the night, uh, along the Pacific Northwest Trail. I've got about, I'm going to go down about a thousand feet in the morning, and then I'll climb another 1,750 feet to get to where I'm planning to stay tomorrow. Um, today was a day, for sure. The... Uh, it started out really good, um, great visibility, the smoke's going down, which unfortunately it does look like it's coming back at least a little bit. Uh, but so it was great views, some fun blueberries, uh, and that was all well and good. Unfortunately, the last like four miles or so of the Pacific Crest Trail before we got to Holman Pass um, was just super boring. Just sort of gradual downhill in the woods, can't see anything um, sort of thing that gets old hiking through really quickly. And then uh, the Pacific Northwest Trail itself started off as I feared it would um, because it's a much less popular trail, um, covered in blowdowns, lots of having to move around and climb over trees and whatnot, um, much like the Mito Valley, except not wet, which made it a lot better. Then uh, finding my way over um, Canyon Creek, which was a lovely creek. There's a great campsite down there, by the way. Um, but finding the trail on the other side sucked. I can't imagine what it must be like in higher water um, it's got to be a, a disaster, but, um, then climbing up here was 1400 feet, I think, of gain, um, 
which isn't a huge deal. I mean, it's enough to be significant. Uh, I mentioned the other day that I was done with my two big climbs, and I am. I wasn't counting this as one of the big climbs, but it is a significant climb, particularly because um, at this stage in the trip, I'm having to pay a lot of attention to water. There's no water source at this campsite, and um, the water sources are going to be uh, a bit sketchy through the whole of the uh, Devil's Ridge area, the whole Pacific Northwest Trail area before we get to Ross Lake. Uh, and so I actually, ooh, there's a big ugly bee, uh, filled up this thing and brought it up here on that 1400 um, foot climb. So, you know, just adding two liters of water to the backpack, which makes it a lot heavier. Basically, I think we've made up and more um, all the food weight that we've lost so far from eating the food. Um, but that just makes climbing harder. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to be up here. It's good to be back out of the river valleys, thank goodness. I do not like them at all. Um, we might not hammock tonight. I know I think I told you last night or this morning um, that I don't want to try new stuff. But uh, there's not, there doesn't seem to be great hammocking spots in this campsite. Um, and so I might set the tarp up with the trekking poles, just have it above me, or I might just cowboy camp um, and sleep under no shelter. I don't think we're supposed to get any rain. If I do that though, I'll keep the tarp handy in case I need to throw it over all the stuff real quick and me. But that is a wrap for day number four. We're halfway through day-wise. We're well over halfway through uh, distance-wise. Um, and today's going to be the middle night, seven nights. This is night number four. Pretty exciting. Here's a look to where we're going today. We're going to be down there. Then we're going to follow the hillside up, 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 and to that saddle. Or hopefully there is a spring that's supposed to be there. That little tiny lake down there. Look at that. You might be able to see the radar station look at tower poking up from Slate Peak just above Hearts Pass where we were a few days ago. More mountain chickens. It's okay. Look at that tail. Looks it just looks like a chicken. It's awesome. Your baby's already flew away into a tree. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, we have reached Devil's Pass. I'm most likely going to take the option to the right, but I do have a choice to make. I could take the option to the left. They're both about the same distance back to the trailhead. The right option takes me to Ross Lake. The left option does not pass through um, a National Park Service managed area. Okay, so let's talk about last evening a little bit. I think when I left you, uh, camera-wise, last evening, I had just been remarking how I was probably going to cowboy camp. I might set the tarp up with the trekking poles um, as it supports, or I might just leave it next to me and grab it over me if I needed it in, in case of a light spring. Well, I ate those words pretty quick. Um, we had a thunderstorm last night that I was not expecting. It wasn't in the forecast I have. Although again, that forecast is about five days outdated at this point. Um, and it's not for exactly this location, it's for Washington Pass, which is close enough, but it's not, not quite the same thing. Anyway, um, I strongly do not recommend using that kind of tarp shelter during a thunderstorm, partly because it's really hard to trust that your trekking poles, um, your whole setup is just going to stay there as the wind blows and it's not going to get blown away. So you're worried about getting rain dumped on you if your shelter blows away. Uh, and secondly, because this uh, rhombus shaped tarp rather than a much bigger a rectangular one just isn't very good at keeping out heavy rain in the first place. Everything was it got very damp um, and I ended up adjusting it to be super low to the ground in order to keep it from blowing away, but that meant that the tarp was laying against my sleeping bag, and so all the moisture just seeped right through. Fortunately, I was able to dry everything out this morning. Um, 
because it was a nice sunny bluebird morning after the thunderstorm passed sometime at midnight. But yeah, so it was a very exciting night that I would not care to repeat. But I'll be looking more carefully at the weather in the evenings from now on to see how I should be setting up my sleeping situation. Well, I've decided to go right and go up Devil's Ridge. And we're off to a pretty exciting start already. Well, I haven't made it quite as far as I had planned to today. Um, Devil's Dome is about two miles further up the trail. We'll get there tomorrow, though. But uh, I came to this spot and said, you know, I think I want to camp here. And I think the view kind of speaks for itself. Um, I've canted some trees a little over there, so I do actually have some real shelter. I'm able to use the hammock tonight. So we won't have to repeat um, last night's fiasco, although of course we shouldn't be getting any thunderstorms tonight. It's all bluebird in the west. Um, you can see over my shoulder here uh, what I'm quite certain is actually a huge plume of smoke coming up from the, the fires near Rainy Pass, which is not what you want to see. That smoke at least shouldn't affect us. It's further enough east that it shouldn't be coming this way. Any smoke that we're getting will be coming down from the Canadian fires. Here's the view just turning around from where I was just sitting. I suspect we'll get much better views of these, or at least of that, uh, tomorrow at Devil's Dome. But it's pretty good right now. You can really just watch that smoke come up. That's depressing to see that. After the rain that we had on day two and then the thunderstorm last night, I would have hoped that uh, that would have really helped to put a dent in those fires. <laughs> 